Hello everyone, welcome to another gel ball video with Jacob. Now you may be thinking, what's the milk guy talking about gel ball for? Or perhaps you may be thinking, oh my gosh, it has been literally six months since I made the last gel ball video. We are going to be looking at some IGBC footage at Azrael's Armory. You might be thinking, what's IGBC? IGBC is a competitive gel ball league. It's still in its development stages. However, I've got a little bit of footage from one of their trial runs. Specifically, this footage was on the trial night on the 6th of August. 2020. IGBC is mostly organized by TSI's Martin. Martin acts as the instructor, referee, as well as guide into how to play the game. I believe they might be opening up to rifles at a later date, but for the moment, they're just relying on their pistols. I myself was using my shark, but as I understand it, any other pistol is also allowed. Gas is highly recommended, as are, of course, your safety glasses mandatory. Now, there is a very elaborate and well-detailed briefing on safety and rules. However, for videos, it's just boring, so I'm not gonna talk about it. I'll give you a brief rundown so you can understand what you're seeing. When you begin the stage, you can go in any direction you like. This is called stagecraft. When you have eyes on a target, you must shoot it twice. However, under the instance of reasonable failure, which would be either gels not seemingly loading for unexplained reasons, or gels flying off in unpredictable directions, you can be told to move on. This considers that you have engaged successfully and hit the target. On the floor can be seen green tape. If you step over said line, you will be penalized for every shot taken over the line, and you can also be penalized for failing to engage a target correctly. The penalty is in three seconds added onto your time, as the aim is to get the shortest time possible. It's not the type of game that you wanna rush through mindlessly, you really have to be a bit methodical, so as Martin says, sometimes you have to slow down to speed up. In this video, we're going to first see my very first practice run, which I do absolutely terribly in, followed by the three chronological trial runs that I actually did competitively. But without further ado, let's get right into that practice run. Shooter, if you're ready, stand by. <laughs> If I have working mags. Lost my other mag. Yeah, nothing's working. So as you can see in that run, things didn't go so well. The initial gun failure really started to throw me off, however, I was determined enough to push through it, even though it was really frustrating. After getting through that first mag, I have a singular alley work really well for me. Before the gun devolves into absolute failure once again. The run was pretty terrible in terms of gun performance. I would estimate I had about a 70% failure rate of the amounts of shots taken. It's been figured out that the dryness of gels can really affect the gun's performance. If you're not regularly keeping them wet, it can absolutely destroy your performance. I had resulted to putting water in on the gels every time before I ran, which was a bit of an annoying process, but it was the only thing that slightly helped. I heard other people were actually using the gun oil silicon to keep their slides lubed. Specifically, it's the magazine, not the gun itself. The magazines, if they're not correctly lubricated, could cause massive failure. I've given this a go and seen a slight improvement. However, I'm still not getting 100% reliability out of my magazines. It seems that it's very much up to luck whether or not you can rely on your gun when you're performing these runs. Nevertheless, I continued on. I had been wetting the gels every run after this first run and there was a slight improvement. And now we'll watch the very first proper timed run. Okay, set. Oh, 
Wait. There. Stop. This first run really started to highlight some of my inefficiencies. The biggest one was my overshooting. What would usually happen is the slide would lock back on my gun and that would basically just clear my mind really. And then I would drop the slide and not remember how many times I had already hit the target, causing me to shoot it twice or at least make sure I've hit it twice. I didn't want to get the penalty for failure to engage correctly, so I just typically overshot way too much. The next biggest issue was the slow reloads. I don't have any real proper gear to be running uh, the magazines on my hip. So my reloads were usually digging a mag out of my pocket and oftentimes also literally they were just fed through my belt loops. I was pulling them literally out of my belt loop and sometimes I'd forget where I left them. Wait. There. So I could definitely use a lot more improvement in terms of what gear I'm bringing into these time trials. However though, one positive note was that I was starting to see slightly better reliability from the pistol. Um, I was just keeping the gels really wet and that was seemingly helping a little bit. However, I was also getting the slide locking back. So one thing started failing where another thing started improving. But with that out of the way, let's get into the next clip. Why? Oh, where's my mag? That's running out of gas, I can tell. So as you can see, the gun was still quite plagued with issues. Why? However, I did notice that my target acquisition was definitely a lot better. I knew that my feet were moving to the points a lot better than they were before, as well as my hands being in the correct locations to look at targets. It was just overall getting a lot smoother with my transitions from those points. Overall, it wasn't a terrible run. I could definitely see myself improving. However, there were a lot of mechanical failures, be that either the gun itself or the gels. I'm not too sure what would be the cause. There was a lot of splatters towards the very end. And that could either be the gels, which I'm pretty sure it wasn't because they had been performing quite normally. I think it's probably something to do with the feeding that might have been causing that issue. It does seem like there's a bit of a feeding gremlin with the APS shark. It doesn't really seem to work all the time for me. I definitely know my accuracy can improve a lot. It was more so I wasn't even getting shots off to have my accuracy start to be the major problem. I'm sure I'll eventually be able to work out the mechanical faults eventually, and I know everyone deals with just bad luck with their runs because it is a level playing field in that sense, but I can't help but be frustrated that I can't really get enough shots off to even have a go at those 100% runs. And now onto the very last clip of the night. Here we go. <coughs> Ah. Oh, I did it again, sorry. So the final run was easily my most mechanically reliable run. My transitions and hand movements were especially on point for that first magazine. Awesome. 
The first magazine was almost perfect. There was a pretty big mess up, which was my own fault. I didn't hear the two hits of one of the trays. And because of that, I could have moved on from that alley, but instead I decided to try and hit it for the what I thought was the second time when I could have just moved on. Ah. Because of that big fumble, my brain just sort of got a little bit flustered again, which I think is one of the biggest pressures is keeping yourself calm, because as soon as you mess up, that can really throw off your run as well as your consistency. So although the overshooting wasn't too big of an issue, it was an issue that immediately came back after that mess up. As for the reloads, I think I was actually getting quite a little bit more consistent for what they were. The second reload was actually quite smooth. I did it again. But the first one was directly after that mess up and I knew that one could definitely use some work. Two, two, two. Ah. As well as towards the end, there was one target which I don't know was either gel's fault or my own. It could have been my own accuracy. Some of the gels in the footage that I can see, and I can only see so much, I see some of the gels flying off in what looks to be strange trajectory, so I'm not sure if it was gel failure or my own. But that's all the footage I have of that trial night. I really actually enjoyed my time. IGBC is a lot of fun. I think it's good to challenge yourself in different ways. I'm not so much about the competition between others, but the competition between yourself and improving your own ability. I do think that IGBC is a bit more catered towards experienced players, but I think if you want to experience gel ball, you're better to start off with skirmishes because they're a little bit more catered towards casual and fun play. As for myself, that was actually the first time I've ever participated in a time trial version with pistols. Admittedly, I do actually have quite a lot of experience with gel ball in general. I've been playing the sport for about three years now, and I've also participated in other time trial based gameplay. The footage that you just saw then was me using my Gen 8 in an earlier version of the IGBC before it had a name. But focusing on the topic, if you want to get involved in IGBC, make sure you look them up on Facebook as well as Azrael's Armory, the hosts of IGBC, and drop a like on their Facebook page so you can keep up to date with more updates. The IGBC is the place where all of the events will be updated, so if you want to participate, make sure you keep a really close eye on IGBC. And of course, a massive thank you to Martin for hosting and organizing IGBC. It's his baby really. He's the one who's really been pushing for it as well as organizing it all. So if you want to support Martin and his plight, make sure you look up TSI. It's Tactical Sports International, an online magazine. It covers real guns as well as the gel ball industry. So if you are interested in either of those, make sure you check them out on Facebook or Instagram. Just to address something for the future of my own channel, I think I'll probably be focusing on IGBC for a little while. I don't really think I'll be getting much back into the gameplay. There's already plenty of other people who do that, and there's some really high quality content creators out there. If you, like me, also make some gel ball content and you wanna boost your channel, feel free to drop a comment below. I'm not really about the competition between other channels. I just wanna see the community grow. And I, I would really love to see IGBC grow. And until we see some really good development with IGBC, I'll probably be promoting it for the near future. Because one, it's a unique footage that no one else is doing. And I really like doing unique things, as you might be able to guess with the Monday Milk reviews. If you like how I edit things, or if you don't like how I edit things, why don't you tell me in the comments below and I can be sure to improve to make content which is better not only for the viewers but for the community as a whole. If you want to support me, like this video and maybe even consider subscribing if you really want to show your appreciation, I would 
doubly appreciate that as well. Make sure you give my Instagram a little look as well because I'm often putting polls up for my other content as well as other posts just about the stuff that I'm interested in. And maybe you'll be interested in that too. I know it's so sad that this episode must come to a close, but thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time in another IGBC video. Or why don't you check out the Monday Milk Reviews? All right, see you guys. Bye-bye.